So we've all been there and we just don't know what to paint, don't feel inspired. So what do you do? Well, I look to the old masters. Um, this is a painting by Samuel Coleman. I had to look away then because I'm not familiar with the name. But uh, I've got a book here, I'll show you. Called A Wash With Colour. Um, it's just got some great American watercolours from the Museum of Fine Arts of Boston. So it's not an instructional book, it's just got some pictures of um, various paintings in there. Very few the sort of style I paint. Um, there's a few John Singer Sargent's in there, which is probably why I, I like this book, because uh, I've done that one as a master study. But um, I thought I'd have a little look through and um, see what uh, inspires me. There's a lot in there that doesn't, um, but this painting here did. Um, not because of the, the detail, because I just don't paint that way in watercolours. I don't do the detail. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but, you know, here's a master painter. I didn't, so I didn't know who Samuel Coleman was, but I just Googled him. And wow, incredible paintings, um, particularly in oils. His paintings are amazing. Um, but obviously a very accomplished watercolour artist as well. So this is the Green River, Wyoming, 1871. So very typical probably of the watercolours of the time um, this is. So what appeals to me is we've got a great composition. The river here takes us through. We've got this nice vertical here, which we've got the, um, the darkest dark against the lightest light. So it's got all the elements of a master paint here. And so... When I don't know what to paint, I'll open up a, one of my art books or have a look online and look for a painting that, you know, I feel, yeah, I could have a go at doing that. But I'm not going to copy him exactly, um, but I'm going to learn from him and I'm going to paint it in my own style. So we've got a very limited palette here that's uh, very similar to what I've perhaps done in the past, just using a blue and a burnt sienna, I would imagine. You know, it's just not a, a huge colour range on here, which makes it a harmonious painting. Uh, we've got some very warm oranges here that fade away to almost a blue off in the distance. So he's created distance that way. The reflections, he's not overdone it. Just subtle reflections, again, creates a nice calm feel to the painting. And you know the, 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 the height of this and the shape here, it's all connected up. And then we've got the shadow here again. And uh, you know, there are some figures on here, but I wouldn't be worried about painting those. Obviously, the people on the boat down there it's quite nice so maybe might have a go at that and then we've got the trees here against the backdrop of the, the river there so that's quite good so I think there's a lot of potential here so we'll give this a go so this is an idle opportunity to learn here so if you don't know what you're going to paint you don't know what to do just use the opportunity while there's a bit of downtime to do some learning and you can really improve your watercolors by doing stuff like that so there's the river takes us into the painting and i reckon he put that little bonfire there as a stopper they were very clever these master paintings master painters which you'll see why they're masters and then we've got this nice vertical rock here which uh, people in this area will be very familiar with the uh, scenes like this but uh, Spectacular to those of us who aren't. Uh, so I'm not going to paint it in the same level of detail as he's done. I'm just going to have a go at uh, capturing something. So, a rock there. This nice curve here. Got these bits of whatever that's another rock here which is an opportunity again for dark against light another sort of perhaps opportunity to lead the eye into the scene rock here so the idea is not just to copy the artist because you know it's a pointless exercise really you know you've got to treat it as a learning exercise otherwise you know what's the point in doing it oh and then we've got a couple of trees there which will give us the reflections here and we may decide to have it a go on the boat see see how it goes so let's get some paint on there what i quite like his um color palette so maybe we'll stay roughly in that area so 
nice and light with the sky as he's done here. So, yeah, so I've used some cobalt blue and a bit of burnt sienna there that uh, I've done some other paintings recently using just those colours but uh, they do uh, create some interesting effects. So there's actually quite a lot of leftover paint here from previous painting sessions and so we'll use that up. So more burnt sienna. So I don't want a soft edge up here, I'm needing a, a hard edge so I'll be going over this again once the sky has dried. So I'll just put some colour down here which will be the later. And now just use clean water and you know this is probably very different to how he would have painted his you know but uh, I'm just doing it in my own style and yeah again like the sky keeping the water nice and light and some warm colors here which will then be putting some cooler colors over the top of that before the sky dries, we'll just have a bit of, bit of warmth in the sky there. A little bit of interest, but to keep it all very light. So we'll let that dry. So, like I say, it's all a learning curve. I wanted to make this more blue over here, so I'm just going to wash some of that off. This is a fix. Never ideal, but I'll just wipe that off but I shall dry it again so it is a good idea to and you don't actually have to paint these master studies you can just study them you know there's so much to learn from just looking at them and finding out why they're good um, and you know so you don't make those mistakes that you know I should have put that get this a lot weaker over here but uh, I've got away with it because I could just wipe it off a little bit so there's the blue distance there which it could also be that the smoke from the bonfire that's actually creating that um, effect so we'll warm it up and now the paper's dry I'll get a hard edge up here I'll paint into that let it mix on the paper so as he's done here try and create interesting shapes on the uh, cliffs the rocks but, uh, and then I can perhaps even use some directional marks but to say I don't want to get into detail and just some clean water down here again it's going to just help create the, uh, the shape the rocks here and uh, any detail that uh, we're going to get on there so I can just lift a little bit off the top there just create a little bit of texture maybe it's difficult not to try to uh, emulate them and uh, put some of their marks in there but it's you know, it's, it's all a learning curve and uh, that's the main thing with these master studies as long as you take something from them there's no shame in uh, learning and uh, copying them. Artists have been doing it for years and that's how I've learned a great deal by looking at uh, these master painters. So I've got a darker bit here where this is in shade and you know these sort of rocks are not my speciality so I'm not expecting to create a masterpiece as he has here but um, as long as I have a bit of fun and come away with a painting of some sort, I'm quite happy. So I'll just put some water on here. I know that will just create some interesting effects. Maybe even just a few bits down here. So it's, you know, again, a good uh, opportunity to try new methods, you know, to try and create. Uh, the illusion of rocks and things. Right. There we go. I think I shall stop fiddling with that. 
Let's uh, have a go over here while we're waiting for that to, to dry. So we've got dark against the light there. A bit of variation in the colours there. Maybe I'll use a bit of yellow ochre for the the bank there that uh, the water has not uh, reached that high as yet. Again, maybe you know this is a, a painting where I'm going to practice creating textures with watercolour. And uh, that see, I'm being influenced by. He's physically painted those uh, textures, but uh, I like to let watercolour paint itself. So we'll try and create some of these textures with the methods I use. Trees, suggestion. And I don't know what size this was painted originally, you know, it could be quite a big painting, whereas I'm just painting on a 8 by 10 inch. So it's uh, very small. I'm just taking away some of that detail. So there we go, there's a part of the land there, and I'll just again, put some water on that just to do something. Red, warm that up. So let's have a go up here. So this is obviously a little bit closer to us, but it's a bit warmer. So I need yeah. Give it a dry brush just to suggest some of that uh, detail there. I think I will have a go at just lifting out a little bit of light there. And I can go really strong thick paint. I want a, you know, a nice dark against the light up here in the it's a little bit warmer than that. Try and get that to shape. down there again I should just use a bit of water just to help it along to create those uh, effects that I'm looking for that can come off each here suggestion of a bit of detail and I find that sometimes if you just put a little bit of detail in places it can be enough bit there and maybe I shall just try and just lift it off of there Again, he's using light against dark here. But uh, lifting watercolour off, you've got to be careful because it doesn't take long before it just looks overworked. I think I'll just cool this side off with a bit of, a bit of blue.
This side is perhaps in shadow. Go back to the warmth where this is catching the, uh, the, the light. Just create a, a little bit of suggestion of texture. So I find it can be quite useful to sort of you know, describe the things you're seeing, you know, and uh, you, it helps you perhaps to pay closer attention to to them, maybe. So I'm going to add connection here. Now we've got this uh, light across here. And then there's a shadow. So I'll just use some of that blue, which comes across here. A bit more delicate than that is needed. Hopefully this will soften and uh, hopefully give me a nice uh, illusion of a, a shadow across there. And then it gets quite dark in the foreground here. Stone there. I can maybe get have a little bit of detail here in the foreground because everything's getting closer to us here. And just vary the colour a little bit just to uh, keep it interesting. Really dark down here. While this is wet, let's just throw in a bit of a bit of something there. And again, I'll use some of my methods of just put a bit of water on here and connect things up. paint itself all so, that dries I shall just lift a few bits of light off there that could be rocks so let's dry that before we get into a mess I'd quite like to get that uh, dark in here a bit more. So we can paint up to that light area. So that could be a rock. The shadow maybe coming off that uh, that rock maybe. A few bits of detail. difficult to uh, not uh, get drawn into detail. Now use a bit of uh, burnt sienna just to put a bit of warmth in here without trying, without uh, hopefully starting to overwork it. Can add a bit of connection. I'll leave that as that. A bit of that burnt sienna. Just a bit of dry brush. This is a little bit nearer to us, so we could have a suggestion of detail on there. Just the uh, landscape there. So, you know, sometimes it's quite good fun to. I'm going to do something different. There's 
a bit of warmth. On here, so it's a good, good enough opportunity to observe. I'm not to dab too much with paper, with tissue paper, because it does just damage the surface of the paper. So it's not a great idea. I think we can probably work on this water a little bit, and then we can have some of that blue. Let's just clean that up. Again, I think I probably mainly used probably the cobalt blue, burnt sienna, possibly a bit of burnt umber and the odd touch of red, maybe. We've got uh, a bit of yellow ochre here as well. The question that quite often comes up is how can I put yellow and blue next to each other and not get green? The thing is, don't mess about with it too much and you'll be fine. So this is all wet at the moment, so now's the time to drop in my reflections. Um, but as he's done here, let's just keep them simple. Let them paint themselves. trees are slightly darker and maybe where these darker parts are so not to make too much of them the fingers are quite good tools for and stuff like that. So these trees are great in sections there. So let's just use a bit of clean water just to well, just wash the brush, just take off the moisture and just manipulate these down a bit. I think it'd be a good idea to let that dry now. We can look at um, some of the tools that he's used. So he's got a dark on the edge of these um, rocks and a sharp point, which just uh, makes them look like they are close to us. So let's have a look at that. And he's even actually got um, your tree as well. So I think we'll just go with the, the dark on the rock there, I think. Maybe just suggest some of the trees in the distance there, because he's using that perhaps as a uh, lead the eye. That's where he's probably has got uh, the odd tree there, because they kind of lead your eye around. And we've got uh, some various bits and bobs. So I can just use a bit of dry brush paint there. Be careful not to uh, overwork it. But at the end of the day, you know, this sort of stuff, I don't see this, you know, as a finished painting where I'm going to try and sell it. You know, it's just a practice. So I don't need to worry about it uh, too much, but um, just enjoy the process of painting. Got a nice bit of white paper there, so idle spot to. I'm not sure what birds would be flying, maybe an eagle in this area, a couple of eagles. 
hovering over. So let's have a go at the boat just for fun. Let's say we've got nothing to lose. A nice red boat. But yeah, I'd imagine this was quite a big painting, I would think. So he's got quite a lot of detail probably on that boat. So there's the boat. Let me suggest a figure. I'll see this so far away. It's just a, uh, a hint that they're obviously just bringing that boat in, or maybe they're just going out. Who knows? So just a bit of clean water. To anchor the boat to the ground, so it's kind of half in the water, half out. And we can just suggest the odd stone and things there on the uh, on the bank there. So just for interest, we'll have a look to see how would he have created that little bonfire and I'm sure he's put that there as a stop to stop the eye going off the paper so I'm just using a bit of water there just to lift a bit of paint off so I would imagine he probably did have some white gouache body paint just a bit of blue and white gouache maybe Just use the water just to, and let's take mine up into the sky. A little touch of white gouache just at the base, just to make sense that it's a fire. Touch of yellow, maybe. So obviously, uh, I think they were masters at telling stories. These are uh, master painters that, um, you know, there's people that on a canoe. There's people around a fire here. So I didn't even notice when I first looked at the painting. Maybe that's actually even someone sat on the on the bank there. I think that'll do before I overwork it. I must take the tape off. Pull away from the paper. Into the paper. So there we go. I think it turned out okay. Obviously it doesn't have anywhere near the detail of the original painting, but it's painted in my style, but um, I've learnt you know, his um, composition methods, some tools he's used to keep the eye in the painting, um, which is a lot of what I use in my painting now. So, you know, people have asked me, how did I learn composition um, by studying the masters? And that's how they learned composition. So uh, give that a go. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, and I shall see you on the next video. If you enjoyed this master study, have a look at my Patreon page. I've got a whole selection on there, um, but also there's another video coming up. So watch this one.